It's 7.05. Let's go Wings. Leading off for the Syracuse Mets, the center fielder, number 21, Rajay Davis. Casey Young on the mound, Rajay Davis digging in, the veteran center fielder hitting 275 with seven home runs. Righty to righty matchup as things get rolling tonight with a slight delay as the bullpen gate and the visitors' bullpen has sprung open. Brent Rooker's now slammed that thing shut, and here we go. DeYoung into the motion. First pitch of the game is a called strike one. No one won. First pitch time and temp brought to you as always by Pathways Incorporated. 81 degrees at 7.05 tonight. DeYoung's 0-1, curveball, bends in beautifully for a called strike two. 0-2 oh, just like that on Rajay Davis. Lots of veterans up and down the order, but particularly up at the top for Syracuse with Davis, Tejada, and Espinosa. Two-strike pitch lined up the middle and a base hit right behind the back of Tejada, or uh, right behind the back of DeYoung, rather, and into center. So an 0-2 single for the still speedy Rajay Davis, and he's on base ahead of Ruben Tejada. The Pathways Incorporated Therapeutic Foster Care Program needs local foster care families today and provides ongoing support to keep children and youth here in our community. Visit pathwaysforyou.org to find out how to get involved. And Davis, third in the league with 16 stolen bases over at first base. The young now to the stretch to Ruben Tejada. The pitch of the right-hand hitter. Fastball outside, 1-0. and Home plate, the third base line and the left field side are in the shade right now. The Right side of the infield, right field and center field still in the bright sun. A little bit of wind blowing in from left. Wind really not a ton of a factor at the moment. The young fires, goes off speed, swing and a miss on Tejada. One and one to Ruben. Does not have enough plate appearances to qualify for the league leaderboard, but in 37 games, he's at 338 with a nearly 430 on base percentage. So he has been very effective offensively for Tony DeFrancisco's club. Turn throw to first. Davis scampers back standing up. Tony DeFrancisco, the manager for Syracuse, a highly successful manager in the Pacific Coast League previously, is coaching third base for the Mets. Former Red Wing first baseman Vinny DiStefano is the first base coach for Syracuse. Just getting rolling tonight. One on, none out. DeYoung after long hold pitches. Breaking ball swerves outside. Two and one. Xander Wheel at first base holding on Rajay Davis with Jordani Baldus being the second baseman on the shortstop side of it, second base. Nick Gordon's at shortstop. Ronald Torres tonight at third with Drew Maggi getting a night off. The pitch tapped on the ground the other way and through the vacated right side of the infield. Tejada foils the overshift. Davis scrambles around to third, making it easily, and runners are at the corners for Syracuse with nobody out. With the right side of the infield completely open, Tejada just took the fastball away and bounced it slowly into right field. There was nobody anywhere near it. So Tejada's at first, Davis now at third base. Syracuse in business in the first inning with runners at the corners for Danny Espinosa. Brent Rooker in left, Jake Cave in center. Jalen Davis is in right. Winston Sawyer is the wings catcher, and that defensive alignment's brought to you by Niagara at Scenic Tours. Travel the scenic route with Western New York's leader in transportation services. Find them at NiagaraScenicTours.net. First one now to Espinosa. Inside, 1-0. and oh. Fastball at 90 miles an hour from Chase DeYoung, who features a fastball curve, slider, and change. The 6-foot, 4-inch, 225-pounder, 25 years old. Switch hitting Espinosa, batting left-handed against him. Stronger side of the plate for Espinosa. Here it comes. It's very high, a changeup that missed. Two and nothing. The wings will shift around for Espinosa, putting three infielders on the right side. He's ending 252 with 11 home runs, just outside the top 10 in the league in RBIs with 48 of them. Outfield straight away for Espinosa with runners at first and third. The pitch. Upstairs, three and nothing. Let's see if Tony DeFrancesco gives Espinosa the 3-0 green light on this pitch. 
Syracuse 10th in the league offensively in terms of runs per game. They're next to last in team batting average at just 253. And the 3 0 swung on and skied foul, pulled way off to the right. Espinosa almost coming out of his shoes at that high fastball. Three balls and a strike. And Syracuse has been hot and cold some offensively this year, but they certainly have the sort of names in the lineup that on the right night, or I guess the wrong night, depending on your perspective, they can really be tough to face. Rajay Davis is at third, Tejada is at first, nobody out. Three and one on Danny Espinosa. The delivery swung on and drilled to deep right field, hooked down the line toward the foul pole. It is a foul ball. So foul by just a bit, that at home run distance down the right field line. Chase DeYoung breathes a sigh of relief as Danny Espinosa just missed a three-run homer. It was crushed down the right field line, but fouled by just a little bit. So instead of 3-0, and oh, now it's to 3-2 and two for DeYoung. And a strikeout now would be big. Espinosa, an even stance upright at the plate as he holds the bat off his left shoulder. The young pauses, shoulder high. Runner at first moving, 3-2 changeup, tapped foul to the first base dugout. He's still 3-2 as Tejada must return to first base. He's running on that 3-2 pitch. We'll see if he keeps on going on subsequent 3-2 pitches. Espinosa will strike out a little bit. And again, this is a spot where Chase DeYoung would love to record a strikeout. Syracuse threatening to get on the board in the very first inning tonight. DeYoung takes the ball into the glove. 3-2 again. Tejada runs again. Swing and a dribbler up the first baseline like a bunt. It will roll foul. DeYoung raced over from the pitcher's mound. And as soon as that rolled off the chalk, about midway up the first baseline, DeYoung reached down with the bare right hand and picked the ball up. Had that stayed fair, might have been a swinging bunt single for Espinosa. Certainly Davis would have scored as he was sprinting for the plate. And instead, Espinosa returns to home plate. Davis back to third. Tejada returns to first. And it'll be another 3-2 pitch. Already the shadow line getting out to the front part of the pitcher's mound in the first inning. DeYoung still in the sun. Throwing pitches from his right hand almost immediately into the shadows. This will be the eighth pitch now of this matchup with Espinosa. Tejada runs again. The pitch is lashed foul, grounded through the first base coach's box, and it is still three and two. When we get to the bottom of the first inning, the Wings will be dealing with Drew Gagno, facing him for the first time ever. Lights already on at Frontier Field. They will not take effect for a while, but they've punched the lights on early. The young gets back on top of the hill for yet another 3-2 pitch. Rene Rivera will be next. The stretch, the delivery. Tejada runs again, and it's ball four high. A nine-pitch walk issued to Espinosa. The bases are loaded with nobody out. Well, yesterday, in a key moment in the game, Devin Smeltzer in the third inning gave up a run and had the bases loaded with nobody out and held Syracuse to only the one run in that inning. We'll see if this first inning is a key inning tonight. Bases loaded, nobody out for Syracuse, and one of their hotter hitters is at the plate, the former Red Wing catcher, Rene Rivera. Stocky right-handed batter. The first pitch from DeYoung is a curveball for a called strike. 0-1-1. One, one. Uh, Rajay Davis at third. Ruben Tejada at second. Danny Espinosa at first with Rene Rivera at the plate. Last four games, he's gone eight for 19 with four homers. The 0-1 changeup grounded slowly toward the middle. Gordon scoops from shortstop to the second baseman. One, Valdez being to first double play. So they get a 6-4-3 double play. Davis scores from third on the play. 1-0 at Syracuse, but key for Chase DeYoung. He's got two outs now. Tejada's now at third base, but with two men out. 
And so DeYoung is an out away from getting out of this, allowing only one run. Now Rivera did a slow grounder up the middle to Nick Gordon at shortstop. Didn't make a great feed to Valdespin necessarily at second, but Rivera doesn't run well, and Valdespin still got the double play turn. Reimer Liriano, the batter. DeYoung's pitch, fastball on the outside corner, 0-1-1. Luriano came off the injured list just before this series began. Crushed a long home run here on Monday night. He's hitting an even at 200 with four home runs for the Mets. DeYoung fires. Swing and a miss. Long speed delivery fooled Luriano. Taco Bell came in down at a count, nothing and two. Bases loaded, nobody out, but now a runner at third, two outs, and just one run in. DeYoung is strike away from limiting the damage. The two-strike pitch on the way, and low on outside. A ball and two strikes to Reimer Liriano. 21 pitches so far in this first inning for DeYoung, number 22 yet to come. Strong right-handed batter Liriano. Wiggles the bat around. DeYoung spots the sign he wants, but right as he was coming set, he backed off the rubber to think about it. Rajay Davis singled it sharply to center to begin the game. Tejada fooled an overshift with a bouncing ball single to right before Espinosa drew a nine-pitch walk. And now DeYoung's 1-2. A check swing foul popped out of play to the right. And an excuse me swing by Liriano. Still one and two. After DeYoung got the bases loaded, he induced the 6-4-3 twin killing from Rene Rivera. And now what's going to happen with Reimer Liriano? Long at top of the first inning for Chase DeYoung. In comes the pitch. Liriano takes a cold strike three. Got him looking with something over the outside corner. And the damage is limited by DeYoung to only... One run, one nothing Syracuse after half an inning. Bottom of the first coming up on Fox Sports 1280. So for the wings, Chase DeYoung limiting the damage to one run, and now Nick Gordon comes up to face the 29-year-old from Southern California, Drew Gagno. Gagno has spent a lot of this year in the big leagues with New York. He was up there a lot of May and June. Had a couple of different stints with Syracuse. Gagno is facing the wings for the first time tonight. Big right-handers pitch to Nick Gordon. He is low for a ball, 1-0. Left-hand batting Gordon hitting 284 with a pair of home runs. And an RBI double last night. Three hits here on Monday night. The pitch, fastball on the outside corner. One ball and one strike. With Syracuse, Gagne 2-2, two two, or Gagneau rather, 2-2 two two with a... 175 ERA. He cranks in the pitch, swing and a miss. One and two. 25 and two-thirds triple-A innings. Gagno's allowed just 23 hits. He has 17 strikeouts and six walks. Drew Gagno. Here it is. Swing and a miss. The breaking ball strikes out Gordon. One down. Gagno listed at 6'4", 195 pounds. His name spelled G-A-G-N-O-N, pronounced Gagno. Now Ronald Torres up there to bat. Torres filling in at third for Drew Maggi tonight. Ronald's been hot since coming off the temporarily inactive list. Little right-handed batter. Gagno's pitch. Quack foul straight back. Oh, and one. Drew Gagno on the mound. It's primarily been a relief piece for the Mets. The delivery lifted the deep right center field. Reimer Liriano backing off has plenty of room and he'll make the catch. Not really that deep at all as it turns out. And the fly out from Torres is the second out of the inning. And Gagno in AAA has been primarily a starter. And last year with Las Vegas, he led the Pacific Coast League in strikeouts. He was third on all of minor league baseball in strikeouts. Was named the Las Vegas team MVP last year. Jake Cave will come up to face him now. Cave had his nine-game Red Wing hit streak snapped yesterday. Pitch to the left-hand hitter, a fastball just outside, 1-0. and 
Gagne throws a fastball in the low 90s. Has a really good changeup that he'll lean on a lot. The 1-0 pitch. Swing and a miss. That was the changeup. One and one. Throws a curve and a slider. The curve generally more often than the slider. And again, he's fastball changeup quite a bit. He kicks and pitches. Cave swings and misses at the high fastball. And now one and two to Jake Cave facing Drew Gagneau, product of Long Beach State, originally a third-round pick of the Brewers out of there back in 2011. He fires. Cave takes way outside, two and two. One-nothing Syracuse in the first inning. Cave owning a 315 batting average with five home runs in 37 Red Wing games. Big shift on for Syracuse. Three men on the right side for Cave. The pitch. Swing and a miss. The changeup strikes out Cave. And the Red Wings go in order, something they have not been doing much of lately. A 1-2-3 first for Drew Gagneau. To the second we go. Syracuse leads the Wings 1-0 on Fox Sports 1280. Deep trivia inning tonight. First correct caller at 2-2-2-1280 will receive a gift certificate to 650 Restaurant and Bar in Victor. A New York Mets-inspired trivia question tonight. Left-hand hitting Gregor Blanco in there. DeYoung with the wind and the pitch. Blanco takes low for ball one. Here's the question for tonight, plain and simple. Who hit the first home run in New York Mets history? Called 2-2-2, 1-0 pitch to Blanco. The former Giant takes off speed down and in. 2 and nothing. Who hit the first home run in New York Mets history? Blanco's batting 244 with eight home runs. The DeYoung 2-0 changeup, swing and a miss. Two and one. First inning, DeYoung had the bases loaded with nobody out, but he only gave up one run. And now hoping for an efficient second inning. He zips home the 2-1 to Blanco. Blanco swings at a fly ball to left. Brent Rooker in the shadows. Will reach up and make a backhanded catch moving right toward the foul line. And Blanco is set down in front of Travis Tyrone. And the Wings tomorrow on the 4th of July will play in Scranton. In a doubleheader Friday, single game Saturday and Sunday. Then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday off for the All-Star break. Then next Thursday, a week from tomorrow, the Wings have a doubleheader at home against Lehigh Valley in their first games after the break. First pitch to Travis Tyrone. Curveball slants outside, 1-0. Lehigh Valley got some really bad news today, by the way. First, the 1-0 pitch to Tyrone. Big slugger, swings and misses, 1-1. One one. Lehigh Valley's all-star catcher, Davey Grullon, has suffered a broken bone in one of his toes after fouling a ball off his foot. He could be done for the year, perhaps, considering the timing. The Youngs 1 1, pop foul straight back off the fists, 1 and 2. Grillon was going to be starting for the IL in the upcoming AAA All Star game in El Paso. And who knows, maybe Tomas Taliz is going to wind up starting for the IL now in the AAA All Star game. 1 2 pitch from De Young. Tyrone takes the curve outside. Two balls, two strikes. Tyrone's inning 227, 16 home runs. Just outside the top 10 in the league. DeYoung working at a quick pace, delivers. Swing and a foul, slap to the right. It's still two and two on Tyrone. Now the team leader in home runs. Dilson Herrera had been leading the team with 17 home runs, but he opted out of his minor league deal with the Mets shortly before the game yesterday. He was in the starting lineup and then scratched, and it was announced that he had opted out of his deal with the Mets. That's why Tim Tebow got into the lineup last night. And Tebow promptly wound up having a big game. Another 2-2. Swing the ground ball pulled to third, uh, third base, but foul. Just outside the bag. And it remains 2-2 two two on Travis Tyrone. one nothing Syracuse, second inning. And Herrera had been a big part of the Syracuse offense, especially lately. But no longer. One out, base is empty. And now another 2-2 two two pitch to Travis Tyrone. It's on the way. Swing and a miss. The changeup struck him out. Second strikeout for Chase DeYoung. And remember, for every strikeout by a Wings pitcher this season, Wegman, Citizens Bank, and Paris Kerwin 
Make a donation to the Volunteers of America to help them strike out poverty. For more info on how you can help, contact the VOA at 647-1150. Log on to voaupny.org or text the word STRIKE to 41444 to donate. Gavin Cicchini, the batter. The delivery, fastball in there, 0-1. Oh Cicchini playing his first Syracuse game tonight. Former New York Mets first-round pick. Just joined them today from AA Binghamton. And now the 0-1 from DeYoung. Cicchini swings at a curve, lines it toward right center. Jake Cave dives, and he makes the backhanded catch. Great play by Jake Cave. Wing center fielder scrambling toward right center, dove and backhanded it. Cicchini robbed of extra bases, and the inning is over. One, two, three. Middle of the second, it's 1-0 Syracuse on Fox Sports 1280. Do we have a winner? So Beth receives a gift certificate to 650 Restaurant and Bar in Victor. Congratulations, Beth. Brent Rooker leads off the bottom of the second. Drew Gagno's pitch swung on and skied to the right side. A foul ball that will slice out of play. 0-1. Oh, Rooker hitting cleanup for the Red Wings. Went one for three with a RBI single. Hit off the fence and left last night. Three-man left side of the infield for Rooker. Gagno's pitch inside for a ball, one and one. Rooker had that fabulous month of June, did not win IL Player of the Month honors, though, for June. That instead went to Toledo's outfielder, Victor Reyes, who also had a great month. Gagno fires it, ground ball toward short. Off the glove of Espinosa, tried to backhand it. The ball dribbles behind him, and Rooker board it first without a throw. The ground ball hit rather sharply by Rooker. Espinosa moving to his backhand side, tried to field it but it went off his glove for a base hit. Rooker's aboard at first. Wings first base runner after Gagno set the wings down in order in the first. And Lamont Wade Jr. comes up now. Victor Reyes in June hit 435 for Toledo with five home runs, 25 driven in. Rooker hit 337 in June, but with six home runs. Anyway, Victor Reyes got that IL of the month honor. Left-hand batting Wade hitting from a crouch. Gagno delivers. Fastball darts over the outside corner at 92 miles an hour. No one won. one nothing Syracuse second inning. They have Travis Tyrone holding on. Rooker at first. Gavin Giacchini at second. Danny Espinosa at short. Ruben Tejada just off the cut of the grass at third. Gagno's 0-1. Wade swings and misses at the change. 0-2. Gregor Blanco, a fine defender in left. Rajay Davis in center. Reimer Liriano in right. And Rene Rivera, the catcher. And again, that defensive alignment is brought to you by Niagara Scenic Tours. The tall right-hander Gagno pauses just above the belt, fires the pitch, and he buries it in the dirt. One and two. And Gagno most of last year with Las Vegas, then the top Mets farm club. Made his big league debut last year with five appearances for New York, including one start. He actually faced Lehigh Valley's Inyel De Los Santos with Philadelphia in each other's Major League debut last year. The 1-2 to Wade. Fastball outside. 2-2. Two and two. This year, 15 games all in relief for the Mets. This year with New York, Gagno 3-1 and one and ERA over 7.5. Really hurt by the long ball during his time of the Mets. Decent lead at first for Rooker. And the Gagno pitch. Swing and a miss. The changeup strikes out Wade. Three strikeouts already for Gagno. I told you he has that good changeup. It's a changeup he only picked up apparently two or three years ago. It's been a huge difference maker for him. He originally came up through the Brewers system. And it took him a while to even get to the AAA level. Got traded at one point to the Angels, spent a year in AAA with the Angels, and then signed before last year with the Mets as a minor league free agent. Xander Wheel, the batter. Gagnon pitches, righty to righty, and a check swing foul nubbed it behind the plate, 0 no 1. Syracuse 1, Red Wings nothing, last of the second inning. Pretty good minor league free agent signed by the Mets, Drew Gagnon, as it turns out. Contributing to their major league team each of the last two years and pitching well for them at the AAA level. Last year in Las Vegas, 
and this year with Syracuse. One out, one on. Toss to first. Rooker dives back in. Almost all the infield now in the shade as that shadow moves quickly toward the right field fence. Still all of right field in the sun on a beautiful 3rd of July night in downtown Rochester. One strike pitch, curveball, swing and a miss. And nothing in two on Xander Wheel. Xander batting 265 with 13 home runs, 43 knocked in. He and Brent Rooker tied for the team lead. And now Wheel tries to guard the plate against Drew Gagno. The stretch, two strike delivery inside a fastball. Here are the kneecaps of Wheel, one and two. Gagno has been a strike thrower for Syracuse, throwing about 66% of his pitches for strikes. About two-thirds of his pitches have been strikes. Pretty good percentage. Rooker again leads at first base. Gagno a glance over there. Rooker's running. The pitcher curveball. Line foul under the feet of Joel Skinner, who jumped out of the way, coaching third base. Still one and two on Xander Wheel. Wings heading to Scranton. After the game, Syracuse has Buffalo ready to face them next, leading into the All-Star break. They were just in Buffalo, so they'll be facing Buffalo at home starting tomorrow. A rare 4th of July at home for Syracuse. Wings over the years have always been at home on the 4th of July. And this year, the first year since 03 to be on the road on the 4th. Rooker was running last pitch. Draws a throw this time, and he dives back. 1-0 Syracuse, second inning. Jalen Davis is on deck for the Wings. They hope to get back to within a game of 500 leading into that big five-game series at Scranton. Gagno ready to go on the hill. Rooker doesn't run, and the pitch is swung on and missed. Wheel strikes out on a changeup. Gagne, or Gagno, again, heavily leaning on the changeup. He's saying Gagne, like Eric Gagne, he was the, the relief pitcher that had such a great changeup for the Dodgers. Gagno has a very good changeup, and he's throwing it a lot with success. Two strikeouts in the first inning, two strikeouts in the second. Rooker led off the inning with a base hit, but he's still at first base. As now Jalen Davis digs in. Righty to righty with Davis, the batter. Gagno pitches. Rooker's running. The pitch is strike. Throw to second. The tag. Rooker's safe. He made it in there. Rooker diving in. Steals second under the tag from Gavin Cicchini. The pitch up a little bit. Pretty decent looking pitch to throw on if you're Renee Rivera. And Rivera's been throwing out guys left and right. The Rooker got in there with only his second stolen base of the year. A good jump for Rooker made the difference. The possible tying run is into scoring position for Jalen Davis. Gagno's delivery, breaking ball, swinging and a miss. And now Davis is down in the count, nothing in two. Davis hitting 286 with five home runs in his first 15 games in AAA, including a home run last night that he ripped to right field. Driven in a shade over a run a game since coming up from Pensacola. Gagno, though, with an 0-2 advantage. Here it is, low and outside. One and two on Jalen Davis. Rooker at second base, two men out. The second baseman, Gavin Cicchini, trying to keep Rooker somewhat close to the bag at second. Gagno likes the sign to look to second base. Once, now again, the delivery. Davis swings and grounds one to shortstop. Espinosa in front of it, and across the body throw to first is perfect. What a throw by Espinosa. And that out ends the inning. That was some kind of a throw from a very talented arm, Danny Espinosa. Rooker left at second base without scoring. At the end of two, it remains 1-0 Syracuse on Fox Sports 1280.
first Syracuse run. Then Homer is next time up off Devin Smeltzer. The Young's 0 1 high, one ball and one strike. Tebow's home run off Smeltzer last night, just his third of the year. His first off the lefty pitcher, however. The Young takes the hands over the head, throws the pitch. Fastball high. Two and one on Tebow. Homer Heisman Trophy winner, two time national champ in football with the Florida Gators. Big left hand hitter. The DeYoung pitch, check swing and a miss. Two balls and two strikes on Tebow. Batting 163. Among hitters in the league with at least 200 plate appearances, that is the lowest batting average by a ways in the IL. DeYoung fires the pitch. Tebow swings, grounds one to second, gloved to his left by Baldespin. Comes up, throws the first. Tebow is out, one away. Linda Young, since the bases got loaded against him with none out in the first inning, has now retired six straight men. The run came in on a bases loaded 6 4 3 double play ball off the bat of former wing Renee Rivera. Ronjay Davis, who scored the run, comes up now. 1 0 Syracuse, top of the third inning. Well traveled Ronjay Davis is in there. The Young brings it to him first pitch. Curve ball, snaps low for ball one. Davis earlier this year in late May spent a little bit of time up with the Mets. His eighth different major league team. The 1-0. That's a strike. Righty and righty change up. And that gets DeYoung even at a ball and a strike on Davis. Well known for being a terrific base dealer in his career. It's on the way to him. Rammed high in the air to right. Sliced down the line toward the corner. And that curves foul onto the berm. One and two. And probably the thing Rajay Davis is best known for is with Cleveland in the 2016 World Series, hitting that home run in Game 7 off of Aroldis Chapman of the Cubs. That tied the game late in a Game 7 classic that the Cubs ultimately, of course, would win. The young pitches. Swing and a line drive through the middle of base hit. Cave over toward left center cuts it off. Davis holds it first with a single. And a one-out man aboard with lots of speed for Syracuse. Ruben Tejada will come up next. In the list of all-time World Series home runs, I mean, that home run from Rajay Davis would have to appear at least somewhere on there, even though his team Cleveland did not win the World Series. But that was a, a big, big home run in a spot in which nobody expected him to hit it, considering it was off Aroldis Chapman. Ruben Tejada coming up. Tejada foiled an overshift, bouncing a single to right field in the first. DeYoung delivers. Davis runs, then stops, and a pop-up foul to the right and out of play. 0-1. Davis, it looked like, was running. I don't think that was a bluff steal. He was taken off, but he must not have liked his jump, so he broke it down in a hurry. And ultimately, Tejada fouled it off anyway. Mets one, Red Wings nothing. Top of the third inning. The Wings are not shifting as much for Tejada this time after he beat the shift in the first. Outfield is bunched a tad in right center. The 0-1 rolled back off the glove of DeYoung. Caroms the Valdespin. He goes to try to tag Davis. Can't get it. Throws the first. Gets the out at first base. So it's a 1-4-3 out at first. Davis avoided the tag of Valdespin and gets to second. Had DeYoung fielded that cleanly, likely would have been a double play. In the end, the Wings get only the one out at first on the carom. Valdespin rushed in to field the deflected ground ball and tried to tag Davis sprinting by him, but couldn't quite tag him. And they do get the out at first. That's the second out of the inning. And it brings up Danny Espinosa now with a man in scoring position. Switch hitter batting left-handed Espinosa. He had a really good plate appearance in the first in which he walked in a nine-pitch battle, helping to set up the run in the first inning for the Mets. Made a really good play last inning to throw out Jalen Davis to end the wing's bottom of the second. Espinosa has a great, great infield arm. The young fires change up, whack the other way, and a base hit into left field. Davis 
held on in case that line drive was caught. So he only makes it to third base, but then as Rooker throws the second, Davis streaks for home and scores. It is two to nothing at Syracuse. Davis was going to hold at third base. He had frozen on the line drive in case Torres caught it at third base. And Rooker looked at third where Davis had stopped and then lobbed the throw into second. And as soon as Rooker let loose of the ball, Davis streaked for the plate and scored without a play. That was a real heads up base running play by a speedy veteran, Rondray Davis, to burn the Red Wings. Espinosa's at first. Only base runner left. The pitch to Rene Rivera. Slow curveball swung on and missed. 0-1. A rare case where on a play like that, the guy who gets a hit does not get an RBI. I mean, Davis essentially stole the run. The young eyes the runner at first. Espinosa staying put. And an off-speed pitch low and away. Evens the count. One ball and one strike. Ronjay Davis waited, and then as soon as Rooker threw the ball to second base, Davis took off for the plate, and the Wings had no recourse at that point. 1-1, popped up foul back into the right, 1-2. and two. That's the sort of situation where sometimes you will see an outfielder actually run the ball in almost. And uh, I guess that would have been the best play. Rooker had to just kind of run in. Certainly could not just lob a throw to second. The young pitches, curveball outside. Two balls, two strikes. And who knows, depending on how this inning goes, maybe Rajay Davis winds up scoring anyway, but then again, maybe not. Two and two on Rene Rivera, the ex Red Wing. The young fires, swing and a pop up off to the right. Souvenir time for somebody. And still two and two. A single run in the first, a single run in the third. Two to nothing at Syracuse. And that's with an early lead as they make a bid to take two out of three from the Red Wings here at Frontier Field. Another 2-2 pitch from DeYoung. Rivera swings and misses. The changeup strikes him out. And the inning is over. Run, though, for Syracuse on two base hits. One man left on. Middle of the third inning, Syracuse 2, Red Wings nothing on Fox Sports 1280. Dr. Mayer brightens my smile. Josh Wetzel here at Frontier Field on the 3rd of July, Independence Eve. Matt Wilson in the studios. Thanks for joining us tonight. Syracuse has a 2-0 lead as Rodani Valdespin starts off the bottom of the third against Drew Gagno. Gagno set down six of the seven wings he's faced. Wings have not had too many stretches lately where six out of seven men have been retired. Pitch to Valdez being swung on and slugged to right. A line drive that's deep. Way back it goes and it's gone. A line drive bullet home run from the former Met Valdez Bean. And the Red Wings are on the board trailing two to one. That is what you call ambushing a first pitch where any Valdez Bean scorching a line drive down the right field line, kind of into that foul pole patio area. Seventh home run for Valdespin. And Triple-A has not bothered him much, but the long ball had certainly gotten to Gagno in the big leagues this year. 99th home run for the Red Wings as a team. They've surpassed last year's total already. Winston Sawyer bats next, takes a fastball strike on the outside, 0-1-1. Valdez being hit that hard. Turning on that pitch, and he ripped it. The 0-1 to Sawyer, right-hand batter, taken on the outside corner. Two quick strikes from Gagne on a pair of fastballs. Sawyer hitting 360 with a home run and 15 doubles in just 21 games in an injury-plagued season. The 0-2 swing and a number foul behind the plate. It's still nothing in two. Sire got off to such a hot start, but then strained his hamstring April 13th. Missed about six weeks. And since coming back, he's continued to hit well. San Diego native trying to guard the plate against his fellow Southern Californian. The 0-2 whacked foul. A ground ball sharply hit off the screen in front of the end of the third base dugout. 
Still 0-2 on Sawyer. 2-1 to the score. Syracuse up by one after the Valdespin solo shot. Daniel winds and pitches. Swing and a foul, rammed way off to the right. And a fan made the catch, wow. That was a fairly hard foul off to the right. And deep in the grandstand, just below the Hardball Cafe, a fan caught that barehanded. Tough night to get foul balls, too. There's a lot of competition tonight with a big crowd. 0-2 yet again, swing and a miss. The changeup fooled Sawyer. Fifth strikeout one time through the lineup for Drew Gagneau. That changeup has been as advertised from Gagneau. Nick Gordon will bat next, the Wings leadoff man. On the Toyota out-of-town scoreboard, they're in the seventh inning at McCoy Stadium. Scrant Wilkesbury shooting for their third straight win, leading the Pawsocks 4-2. A Scrant win would get them to within one win of 50 on the year. First one to Gordon, floats outside, 1-0. Bottom of the fourth from Durham. The Bulls won. Charlotte nothing. Durham coming into play tonight. Two and a half games up on Gwinnett atop the south. Pitch to Gordon. Fastball outside. 2-0. They've played three in Louisville tonight. The Bats lead Indianapolis 6-3. Columbus kind of running away with the I.L. West. Gagno's 2-0. Gordon pulls a ground ball to first. Skidding hop. Grabbed by Tyrone, he'll underhand to Gagno at the bag. And a 3-1 putout recorded for the second out of the inning. And the bases are empty for Ronald Torres. Lonette has a 1-0 lead in Norfolk in the fourth inning. Columbus in Toledo tonight. Scoreless in the fourth. Game two of the doubleheader from down the throughway in Buffalo. The Bisons and the Iron Pigs are tied at two. And in game one, they went eight innings with Buffalo outlasting the Iron Pigs 5-4. And now to Reyes, Ronald flied out to right in the 1-2-3 first for Gagno. He turns, now pitches. To Reyes takes low and away, 1-0. Red Wings Parent Club, the Twins, play later on in Oakland tonight. Twins calling up Zach Littell from the Red Wings today with Jake Odorizzi landing on the injured list. 1-0 to Torres in at the knees, 1-1. One one. Odorizzi... Suffered blisters last night, or a blister on his right middle finger. Suffered the loss to the A's last night. The 1-1 from Gagno poked in the air, a high fly ball to right. Liriano shading his eyes from the sun will make the catch, and that wraps up the inning. But the wings are on the scoreboard. Jordani Valdespin with a solo home run line to right, and it's now 2-1 Syracuse at the end of three innings on Fox Sports 1280. inning when Syracuse had a chance to do a lot of damage but only ultimately scored one run. The Young's first pitch of the inning, a breaking ball that stays high, 1-0. Oh. Mentioning last inning, Odorizzi landing on the Twins injured list, Zach Littell going up. Odorizzi now is going to miss out on a chance to be in the All-Star game. The 1-0, oh, curve ball, topped foul, bounced up the third baseline, 1-1. One and one. Former Red Wing Jose Barrios now from the Twins added to the big league all-star game coming up in Cleveland. Odorizzi scratched from the all-star game with the blister. And now Barrios will take his spot. Odorizzi also obviously will not start Sunday in the next twin series before the break, which could impact certainly the Wings pitching plans over the upcoming series in Scranton, although that is yet to be determined. One and one in Liriano, backing away from home plate at the moment. Looks like he has something in one of his eyes. Plate umpire Ryan Adderton is conversing with him to see if Liriano's all right. Now he says he is. Liriano waves away the trainer from the dugout. Gets back in the box. Liriano's had a lot of injury issues in his career. He's a very talented guy whose career has been somewhat star-crossed. 1-1 pitch, popped up foul straight back. 1-2. and two. And Liriano missed a whole season with Tommy John surgery on his elbow and well, you'd never know it now. He has an absolute rocket launcher for an arm from right. But he also, one year in spring training, got hit in the face with a pitch and missed an entire year with that. DeYoung fires. Changeup fades inside. Two and two. Liriano has not played in as many games as he would have 
due to some injuries. But he has a lot of ability. De Young trying to polish him off, delivers the pitch. Swing to ground ball. Over to the third base dugout foul. Still two and two. Two to one Syracuse in the fourth inning. Mets and Yankees in the third inning from City Field tonight. The Yankees lead two to one. Jeff McNeil has homered it for the Mets off Domingo Herman, who's off the Yankee injured list. Another 2-2 from Chase DeYoung. Fastball on the inside corner. Got him looking. Luriano strikes out on a called third strike for the second time tonight. Strikeout number four for DeYoung. And there's one out in the fourth inning in front of Gregor Blanco. Jeff McNeil will be an all-star for the Mets. He's a former college teammate, by the way, at Long Beach State. Of today's Syracuse starting pitcher, Drew Gagno. They were teammates with Long Beach State. Pitch to Gregor Blanco, swing and a miss out in front of a changeup, 0-1. Blanco flied out to left earlier. Guy who's been around with several teams has had some really nice postseason moments. Blanco's played on two World Series champion teams with the Giants. The 0-1 line toward left center field. Jake Cave will have to play that one on a bounce. The Blanco's one for two with that clean single. The fifth hit for Syracuse tonight. All of them have been singles. And Blanco, who will run at some, is now on at first in front of Travis Tyrone. Two runs, five hits for Syracuse. One run, two hits for the Wings. The run coming on the line drive home run from Jordani Valdespin last inning. Tyrone, a power threat at the plate, digging in. The young sets now pitches. Curveball beautifully thrown for a strike. No one won. Chase DeYoung on the mound from Long Beach, California. Second round draft pick out of high school by the Blue Jays originally. Throw to first, Blanco dives back. DeYoung, a product of the same high school that's produced, actually, oddly enough, a bunch of former Red Wings just by chance. Chase is 0-1, fastball up and in. One ball and one strike. Wilson High School in Long Beach is where Chase went. Was there just after Aaron Hicks, the former Red Wing and now Yankee outfielder. Here's the 1-1. DeYoung grounds one to short. Grabbed by Gordon to second for one. Valdez beans relay to first. That's a double play. 6-4-3. Even with the shift, the Wings get it turned. And that double play ends the inning. No runs ahead, none left. Halfway through inning number four, the score, Syracuse 2, Rochester 1 on Fox Sports 1280. <laughs> Dr. Michael Mayer. Syracuse leads 2-1. Jake Cave starts off the Wings half of the fourth inning. Part of the lineup for the Wings this inning against Drew Gagneau. Pitch to the left-hand hitting Cave. Gagno's pitch outside. The knees for ball one. They shift three men over the right side of the infield for Cave. Syracuse has shifted, I think, more defensively this series than earlier. The pitch, big swing and a miss at a breaking ball down and in, one and one. Earlier this season when the Wings had played Syracuse, I don't know that they were shifting quite as much, although some of it certainly could be and should be personnel related. Cave was not with the Wings early in the year. The 1-1, one, one, off speed and low, 2-1. and one. Cave does tend to pull the ball a lot, generally hits the ball in the air a lot with that uppercut swing of his, which sometimes gets a little too steep, that uppercut. They kick the 2-1, change up, found the outside corner, 2-2 two and two on Cave. And overall for the Wings, it's been tough to criticize anything Cave has done. Came into the game hitting 315 as a wing this year. Gagno throws the pitch. Fastball, swung on late, foul down the left field side into the seats, ouch. Still two and two. I think Cave might have been sitting on a changeup. He struck out, I believe, on a changeup in the first. So Cave maybe was waiting on a changeup, got the fastball instead and was late on it. Line that sharply into the seats, down past the third base dugout. 
Still two and two to Cave. Third baseman Ruben Tejada playing over where the shortstop generally would play. And Gagne with another 2-2. Two -two. Up high, three and two the count. A rare three ball count for Gagne tonight. In fact, I believe this is the first three ball count he's gone to. 2-1 Syracuse, Cave leading off the Red Wings last of the fourth inning. It'll be Cave, Rooker, and Wade this inning against Drew Gagne, facing the Wings for the first time ever. And back he comes with a 3-2. Change up, swing and a miss. Cave down on strikes. And the change up got him. Sixth strikeout for Gagne and only three and a third innings. Wings with just two hits so far tonight. And this is a Red Wing team that has been so good offensively. And since June 4th, while going 20 and 9, the Red Wings as a team hitting 318. Nobody in the league within about 30 points of the Wings team batting average during that same time frame. Rooker bats next. The pitch sky to shallow right. A high fly ball, Reimer Liriano hustling in, still coming on, and he makes the catch after crossing the foul line. A foul out from Rooker to the right fielder, Liriano, on a ball that stayed up in the air forever. And Liriano finally got there right as he crossed the foul line. He made the catch. Two up, two set aside by Gagno. Making a bid now for his second 1-2-3 inning of the night. I couldn't tell you the last time the Wings went in order twice in the same game. I mean, it's been a while. Lamont Wade is in there. Wade struck out in the second. Tejada moves in at third. Should Wade bunt in the pitch. Lamont takes a fastball strike at 92 miles an hour from Drew Gagno. Gagno working quickly. Delivers. Fastball low. A ball and a strike on Wade. Three men on the right side of the infield should Wade pull it. It's on the way to him. Low for a ball. Two and one. If Wade can extend the inning, Xander Wheel would come up next. Almost all the field now in the shadows. Only deep center and deep left center still in the sun. It's on the way to Wade and a fly ball popped to shallow left. Tejada racing back from third cross of the foul line and makes the catch. So that pop foul out to the third baseman, Tejada, wraps up a 1-2-3 inning for Drew Gagno. We're through four innings tonight at Frontier Field on Independence Day Eve. 2-1 Syracuse on Fox Sports 1280. Under the hands and a strike called, 0-2. Cicchini made it up to the big leagues in 2016, spent about a month of 2017 in the big leagues with the Mets, but has been hurt a lot of the last two years. And now the two-strike pitch. Cicchini lays off a high fastball, 1-2. and two. And he had played in six games for Binghamton. Tonight, his first game with Syracuse as he comes back from a quad injury, missed a lot of last year with a heel injury. That's from a bit of a crouch, open stance. De Young's 1-2, change up lined into left down the line. That's a base hit. Rooker rushes over to pick the ball up. Cicchini touches first, streaks for second. Here's Rooker's throw, a one-hopper, and Cicchini is safe, sliding in. A leadoff double for Cicchini. He slid to the outfield side a second and then made sure he grabbed onto the bag with his left hand, not over sliding second base. And Cicchini doubles and instantly a threat for Syracuse as they try to add to their lead in the fifth. They lead 2-1. to one, And now it's Tim Tebow's turn. Tebow grounded out to second base his first time. Big left-handed batter in there against DeYoung. So Reyes off the edge of the grass at third should Tebow bunt. The pitch up and away, 1-0. Oh. Tebow's been playing professional baseball now for his third year. 
His former agent, Brody Van Wagenen, now the general manager of the Mets. The 1-0 pitch, swing and a high foul fly to the left. One and one. Here's his NFL career ended. Played a little bit of quarterback for a couple of different teams in the National Football League. Tebow grew up in Florida. Played high school baseball and was very good until focusing on the gridiron, the end of his high school career. The young sets letter high and now zips in the 1-1. Tebow takes off the outside corner, 2-1 the count. Tebow hit about 270 last year with Binghamton, although he did not get the full season in. He had an injury that cut short his 2018 season and split the 2017 year between two different Class A teams for the Mets. 2-1 pitch, swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. Winston Sawyer has to be careful back there. Twice this year, Tebow in a really long overswing has clocked Winston Sawyer on his backswing. <laughs> Winston might be back a little bit further than normal with Tebow batting. Chikini's at second, nobody out in the fifth. Two and two on Tebow. The young could really use a strikeout. Chase cranks it home. It is inside. Fastball at 90 miles an hour, barely missed. Three and two is the count. Rajay Davis, the leadoff hitter, will be coming up next for Syracuse. Chase DeYoung working with a 2-1 deficit. Nobody warming up yet behind him in the bullpen. Overall, it's been a solid start for DeYoung, and he really could have only given up one run at this point. Here comes the 3-2. Swing and a foul coming back. Tebow, I think, went after ball four away, and it's still 3-2. Remember the second Syracuse run was a little bit of a fluke. Rajay Davis was at second base with two outs when Danny Espinosa singled the left in the third inning. Davis was going to stop at third base on the base hit, but then when Brent Rooker's throw came into second base, only as soon as Rooker let go of the throw did Davis then sprint for home, and he scored without a play. 3-2 again from DeYoung. Tebow takes inside. A breaking ball missed, and Tebow draws the walk. Runners were at first and second, and nobody out for Rajay Davis. And Davis has reached twice. He has scored both Syracuse runs. Two for two. Tony DeFrancesco now visits with him on Davis's way to home plate. I'm sure they were talking about whether or not to bunt right now. There's Davis so fast, even on a sacrifice bunt attempt, sometimes he can beat it out for a hit. Wings will play into the corner should Davis bunt here. DeYoung from the stretch puts the ball into the glove. The pitch. Davis not bunting. Checks his swing and ball inside. But he went too far, did Davis. On the appeal to first, Eric Backus signals strike. So it's 0-1. And with a strike on him now, Davis might be asked to bunt. Chikini's at second. Tebow is at first. The young pauses. One strike pitch. Davis is squaring, and he lays down the bunt in front of home plate. DeYoung scoops it up, throws the first with Baldus being covering. The sacrifice goes 1-4. And on the play, Chikini advances to third base. Tebow heads to second. And now Ruben Tejada, the batter, with just the one out. A big plate appearance for Tejada. The young trying to keep the wings down only one. Only one out as Tejada digs in, and he has been really good at the plate for Syracuse. One for two tonight. A batting average that right up to the second he has nudged over 340. Righty to righty. De Young stretches, now pitches. Tejada swings and squibs one off the third baseline like a bunt. Barehanded by Sari, slips as he throws. Dug at first by Wheel for the out. On the play, Cicchini has scored, and it's now 3-1. A swinging bunt number up the third baseline. Sawyer made a good play. 
Winston Sawyer went to barehanded. The Wings catcher had only one play, and that was the first base. And as he planted to throw, he slipped. Xander Wheel made a great scoop at first base. Xander Wheel with a do-or-die scoop on an in-between hop on that low throw. So a good play on Sawyer's behalf getting to it, and then a good play on Wheel's behalf making the scoop. Two men are out. Tebow is at third base. Danny Espinosa, the hitter. The pitch. Change up, swing and a miss. 0-1-1. Those single runs in each of the first three odd-numbered innings, the first third and fifth for Syracuse tonight. But again, if DeYoung gets out of this only allowing one run in the fifth, he will have done a good job of limiting the damage. 0-1-1 on Espinosa. Switch hitter batting left-handed. The one-strike pitch swung on and hit high in the air to left field. Brent Rooker retreating, has room. Rooker front of the warning track is there to reel it in for the out. And that ends the inning. One run for Syracuse on one hit, one walk, and a man left at third base. Middle of the fifth inning, Syracuse leads the wings 3-1 to one on Fox Sports 1280. At three to one, last of the fifth inning. Xander Wheel comes up first against Drew Gagno. First pitch of the inning, a fastball that zips over the outside corner. Oh, and one. Wheel struck out in the second inning. Gagno set down six straight wings since Jordani Valdes being led off the third with a home run. And the 0 1 from Gagno, low and outside, one and one. Wings have been retired one, two, three in both the first and the fourth innings. First time they have been retired twice, one, two, three in the same game in the last five games. The pitch, swing and a foul, tipped behind the plate. The advantage to Gagno, one and two. And the Wings have gone four games in a row without being retired in order two times in the same game. They've been getting so many men on base. Last nine games, the Wings have averaged almost 18 base runners per game, scoring almost nine run a game, runs a game in that stretch. Here it is, breaking ball, lifted it foul down the right field line. And remains one and two on the Tennessee native Xander Wheel. Wheel, Jalen Davis, and then Jordani Valdespin in the bottom of the fifth. Wings with only two hits off Drew Gagno, each of them leading off the inning, the Third inning home run from Valdespin and the second inning single from Rooker that led off that inning. 1-2 again, up on high. Wheel ducking back out of the way from it. Two balls and two strikes. Three men on the left side of the infield at four wheel. Outfield straight away. Gagno pitches. High and inside. Three and two. Wings will have to rally tonight in order to move out of this virtual tie with Syracuse for third place. Now, Syracuse, about five weeks ago, for a, for a little bit, was in first place in the IL North. Now the payoff. Wheel swings and misses. Gagno got him with a fastball. Second time tonight, Wheel has struck out against Gagno. He has now fanned seven men tonight. And that'll bring up Jalen Davis to face Gagno next. Davis grounded out the short earlier. And Gagno will strike out guys, certainly at this level. Last year leading the Pacific Coast League in strikeouts for Las Vegas. First pitch here to Davis, low and away and on the corner, called strike one. The Mets certainly thrilled to be out of Las Vegas and be in the International League again. The 0-1, Davis takes in the dirt. One ball and one strike. That's actually own the Syracuse franchise. Last year they owned them, but their player development deal the franchise still had with the Nationals was not yet up. So it was a strange situation where a year ago the Mets owned Syracuse and they were a Nationals affiliate. Pitch to Davis, outside, 2-1. and one. So the Mets owned the... Triple-A affiliate of one of their competitors in the NL East last year. Washington now relegated to the Pacific Coast League in Fresno. 2-1 to Jalen Davis. Topped foul, bounced over to the third base dugout. 2-2 two and two the count. 3-1 to one the score. The Red Wings trail by two runs. Bottom of the fifth. 
And that's we're in Las Vegas for six years, 2013 through 2018. Before that, they spent a little bit of time in Buffalo. Pitch to Davis. Cracked the deep center field. This has a shot to get out. Rodre Davis going back. You can forget it. A home run off the batter's eye in center. One run game again, three to two. Eerily similar to a home run that Jalen Davis had earlier in the homestand. Smashed to deep center. Ball getting hung up in the net on that batter's eye, well up above the fence. Home run number six in Triple A for Jalen Davis. And now Jordani Valdespin will bat. Jordani lined a home run out of here. His other time up. Pitch to Valdespin. Outside, 1 0. Valdespin's home run was a liner on the first pitch of the third inning. Both Red Wings runs courtesy of home runs. The 1 0. Left hand batter takes low. Two balls and no strikes. Bases empty, one out. Gagneau fires. Goes to a breaking ball and drops it over the outside corner. Two and one on Valdespin. Gagneau has given up now four home runs in his three Syracuse starts since getting demoted in mid-June from New York. 2-1 delivery. Valdespin runs up as if the bunt. They appeal to third. No swing as Valdespin apparently pulled the bat back in time at a ball that sunk low. 3-1 and one the count now on Jordani, the former New York Met. Winston Sawyer is on deck. Gagneau wheels back into the windup now for the 3-1. Valdis Bean takes outside, ball four. A rare walk drawn by Jordani, and the Wings have the possible tying run on base for Winston Sawyer. The Davis home run, by the way, estimated at 430 feet to straightaway center. Of course, home runs this year are traveling much further with the Major League Baseball that is so aerodynamic. I think a lot of home runs are generally traveling somewhere, you know, in general. And again, this is a generality, but 15 to 20 feet further in many cases than a year ago. First pitch to Sawyer. Winston takes low, one and nothing. With one out, the Wings have the possible tying run on at first. Sawyer struck out his first time up. Gagneau to the stretch. He's not had to pitch very much at all from the stretch tonight. A glance to first. The pitch on the way, but not yet. A throw to first, and Jordani scoots back safely. Drew Maggi is coaching first for the Wings tonight as he gets the night off. Maggi's arm is sore. He's been drilled in basically the same spot in his arm a couple of times here lately. Gagneau with a long set. The big right-hander pitches. Sawyer stares at a fastball strike. One and one the count. Three to two the score. Syracuse leads by a run. Much more of a pitcher's duel, at least so far tonight, than in many of the games the Wings have been experiencing lately. Throw to first. Valdez being dives back in. He was looked like just in the process of taking maybe a slightly bigger lead when Gagno threw over there and Made it a relatively close play as Jordani had to dive back. Light's starting to take a little bit of effect now as all the field is in the shadows. Gagno throws the first again. Valdespin makes it back standing this time. Gagno's at 72 pitches on the night. His last time out, Gagno threw 84 pitches in Buffalo in a loss to the Bisons on June 28th. After a long hold, Gagneau fires. Winston Sawyer whacks it foul to the backstop. And the edge to Gagneau on the mound, one and two. 
Boy, what a crowd we have here tonight. This place is packed. Fans in standing room only sections beyond the fence out in left center tonight. Eager Lakes Gaming Racetrack left field at Terrace is jammed. Can't wait to hear what kind of a crowd it is tonight. Valdez being leaning at first. Not running. 1-2 to Sawyer. Got him swinging. A high fastball strikes out Winston. So now they're two away. Up to eight strikeouts for Gagno tonight. A season high for him. With two outs this inning, top of the order time, Nick Gordon. Gordon's 0 for 2 with a strikeout and a ground out. Slim left-handed batter digging in to face Drew Gagno. Gagno pauses tight to the body. After a long hold, time called at home plate by Gordon. Three runs, six hits for Syracuse. Two runs, three hits for the Red Wings. Neither team has made an error. Gagno ready. Gordon ready at the plate. Righty's first one. Nick takes a fastball outside. And a 1-0 count. Action just now starting in the Red Wing bullpen as Preston Gilmet begins to loosen up. There has been no activity in the bullpen for Syracuse tonight. The 1-0. Gordon swings and misses, flailing away at a changeup low. One ball and one strike. Next inning, it'll be the middle of the lineup for Syracuse in the top of the sixth. See if Chase DeYoung gets a chance to go back out there or not. A ball and a strike to Gordon. Red Wing shortstop climbs back in, pinwheels the bat around with his right hand a couple of times. Gagno stretches. The pitch on the way. Gordon swings and rams one to left center field, carrying well. Rajay Davis can't get to it. The ball bounces up off the top of the wall and over the fence. A tough break for the Wings because Valdespin will be held at third base. Runners are at second and third now in the automatic double from Nick Gordon. Had that ball not bounced up over the fence, Joel Skinner likely would have been waving at Valdespin around, so the Wings catch a tough break for the time being. I think Valdis being off in the crack of the bat had a really good chance of scoring on that had the ball not bounced over the fence. But it bounced up over the wall. I think it hit actually, I think that uh, actually hit the pitch clock timer and then ricocheted back onto the field of play. Now the Wings catch a bad break. This could be tied right now instead. Still 3 to 2 Syracuse. Men are at second and third with two outs for Ronald Torres. Syracuse's interim pitching coach, Royce Ring, is out to the mound to talk things over with Gagno. Royce Ring, a former IL lefty, filling in right now for Glenn Abbott, who has been away from the team with some health issues recently. And Torres trying to make sure the Red Wings do not wind up paying for the ball bouncing over the fence. Gordon hit that real well. Again, Nick has been going the other way to left and left center a lot. And he hit that hard up the left center field gap. It landed on the warning track of the ball, then bounced up over the wall for the ground rule double. So Reyes the hitter, infield back with two men out. Gagno fires. It is a changeup for a called strike one. 0-1-1 to Torres. He twice has flied out to the right fielder, Liriano. Valdespin at third, Gordon at second. Wings trail by a run. The 1 or 0 1 rather. Swing and a miss and another change up. Back to back changes and Gagno's in front of Torres, nothing in two. And now Torres will have to guard the plate. Ronald just rejoining the Red Wings at the start of this homestand, and he has had a really good homestand at the plate. Holds the bat off his right shoulder, pointing the barrel straight up. Two-strike uh, delivery in the dirt. Another change from Gagno. Before the game, we told you Gagno will heavily lean on that changeup, and he certainly has tonight. 
It has been a very good weapon for him. Mostly fastballs and change-ups. And then occasionally mixing in the breaking pitches. One out this inning, Jalen Davis slugged the home run to dead center. Valdez being then walked, and after Sawyer struck out, Gordon hit a double that bounced over the wall in left center. One and two on Torres. Ronald batting up in the batter's box a little bit. Ordinarily, I'd think maybe he was trying to take away the changeup, but Torres always bats up in that part of the box. Here it comes, swing a little punched fly ball that will be right at the second baseman. Cicchini makes the catch in the floater, and the inning is over. The Red Wings get a run, but catch some bad luck in this inning as well, leaving runners at second and third after the homer from Davis. 3-2 to two Syracuse at the end of five innings on Fox Sports 1280. Last inning on the Jalen Davis homer, but a tough break on the Nick Gordon automatic double. And Chase DeYoung will return to the mound for the top of the sixth. Renee Rivera at the plate. First pitch of the inning, a tumbling curveball beautifully thrown for a strike. 0-1. Now DeYoung has worked five innings tonight, 15 outs recorded. He has not gotten a 16 out in an appearance this year. The 0-1 wrapped in the ground wide at third and past the lunging Torres and into left. Rene Rivera leads off the sixth with a single. A man on for Reimer Liriano. Well, the season high in innings pitched this year for DeYoung is five innings. Working into the sixth tonight, Liriano, he has struck out looking twice. And Liriano coming up now to face DeYoung. I mentioned is out of Wilson High School from Long Beach, California. Same school that produced former Red Wing Aaron Hicks, but also former Red Wing legend Bobby Gritch from that same high school. Here it comes to Liriano. Low and away, 1-0. One-time Red Wing, Sean Burroughs, and his dad Jeff, also from that high school, and Hall of Famer Bob Lemon, all those guys. Played baseball at Wilson High School in Long Beach, where Chase DeYoung went. Chase looks the first, throws the 1-0. Liriano takes a strike on the outside edge, 1-1. One one. DeYoung at 85 pitches on the night. The Wings have Preston at Gilmet backing him up. 3-2 score in the sixth inning. Syracuse by a run. Rivera at first, nobody out. DeYoung with the pause in the pitch. Swing and a high fly ball, shallow right. Jalen Davis running in, still coming on, and Jalen will get there to make the catch. Very high fly out from Liriano to his fellow right fielder, Jalen Davis. One man out, as Rivera remains at first base. The Red Wing friend to partner with Villa of Hope again this season for over 75 years. Villa of Hope has been helping youth and their families regain control over lives that might seem like they are lost. Find out more at Villa of Hope. Dot org. And Gregor Blanco is the batter. Left hand hitting a veteran. Three man right side of the infield for Blanco. The delivery is a change up for a strike. 0 and 1. Syracuse's team has featured so many, uh, so many guys with extensive major league experience this year. Blanco, one of a long list of guys like that that have played for the Mets this year. The 0-1, low, 1-1's one one's the count. A very unique IL roster that has featured so many games of big league experience. One of those players they had earlier this year that apparently is not going to be rejoining him is the former twin Carlos Gomez, who was just outrighted by New York. The pitch, Blanco drills a fly ball to deep left center field. Rooker and Cave go after it. Rooker, the left fielder, makes the catch as he backs off onto the warning track. Well, Blanco gives it a ride to left, but is out. Rivera returns the first. And with two men away, DeYoung next will go after Travis Tyrone, or will he? Nope, Joel Skinner's going to go to the mound. And he will bring in Preston Gilmet. DeYoung with 89 pitches tonight. Goes a season-high five and two-thirds innings. A pretty strong outing for DeYoung, scattering at seven hits. And uh, could have had an even better night with a break or two along the way. So he will leave with a man at first, two outs in the sixth, three to two, the score, Syracuse by one. And we'll return with a story on Preston at Gilmet right after this on Fox Sports 1280. 
Game's gone final from Pawtucket tonight. Scrant Wilkery beats the Boss Sox 5-3. Each team connecting for three home runs in McCoy Stadium. The Gilmet pitch. Breaking ball hangs high, 1-0. Al Higashioka, Cyro Estrada, and Zach Zayner with Scranton all homer. Cole Sturgeon, Chris Owings, and Gorky Hernandez go deep for the Paw Sox. Scranton with the win, now 49 and 35 atop the IL North. Gilmets 1 0, breaking ball in for a strike, 1 and 1. Tyrone 1 0 for two with a strikeout and a ground down into a double play against DeYoung. Not holding on Rivera at first. Gilmet from that over the top angle throws the pitch. It's very high. Two balls and a strike. Seventh inning from Durham. Charlotte has a 2 1 lead over the Bulls. They're in the sixth inning from Louisville. The bats seven, Indianapolis four. Gilmet brings in the 2 1. Tyrone swings and misses at a splitter in the dirt. Two balls, two strikes. Lynette, two and a half games behind Durham in the IL South. And the Stripers with Kyle Wright on the hill. Blanking Norfolk four to nothing in the sixth inning from Harbor Park. Toledo leads Columbus four to two in the sixth inning from Toledo. Here at Syracuse three, the Red Wings two. Two two pitch, swing and a miss. The high fastball strikes out Tyrone. And the inning is over, no runs a hit. And a man left on. For Syracuse. Middle of the sixth inning, it remains Syracuse three, the Red Wings two on Fox Sports 1280. Jake Cave now leads off the bottom of the sixth. He has fanned both times tonight against Drew Gagno. Left handed batter facing the righty again, and the first pitch of the inning is a breaking ball for a called strike one. Seawald is beginning to loosen up now behind Gagno in the Mets bullpen. 0-1 pitch. Change up. Floats over the outside corner. 0-2. They've tried to avoid a third strikeout. And it's been a season-high strikeout night for Gagno. Two-strike delivery. Swinging a dribbler foul of the first baseline. Still 0-2. Eight strikeouts for Gagno thus far tonight in five innings. Dave trying to avoid becoming number nine. Big shift on in the infield. Three men on the right side. The third baseman, Tejada, is playing in the traditional shortstop spot. Outfield shades Cave a couple of steps the other way to left. Here it comes. Fastball outside. And now a one and two count on Jake Cave. Norfolk, Virginia Beach area native. Former Yankee minor leaguer. The pitch. Swing and a ground ball to first base. Snagged by Tyrone. He'll take it to the bag himself. And Cave grounding out in the changeup. Retired three unassisted to start the inning. And the base is empty now for Brent Rooker. Rooker's one for two. One of the four hits the Wings have accomplished off Gagno tonight. Right up to the minute, batting 293, getting closer and closer to 300. In the top 10 in the league, and on base percentage, slugging percentage, on base plus slugging percentage. The delivery, Rooker lines one sharply to third, short hopped on a nifty play by Tejada, and the throw across the diamond in plenty of time for the out. The Rooker hit it sharply, but that low liner was short hopped expertly by Ruben Tejada at the hot corner. Turns into a second out of the inning. Just like that, two outs, nobody on. Lamont Wade comes up. And Gagno now has a chance to retire the wings in order for the third time tonight. First pitch to Wade. Left-hand batter takes outside, 1-0. The only runs for the wings tonight have come on homers. For Danny Valdez being and Jalen Davis. Here it is, breaking ball, fouled off the front foot of Wade. Ball rolls all the way down the first base line. Lamont stung by that foul ball off his foot. One ball and one strike. And Gagneau caught a lucky break last inning. After he gave up the Davis home run, he walked Jordani Valdesbean. 
And then with two men out, Nick Gordon pounded one to deep left center. I think the ball likely would have scored Valdespin off in the crack of the bat with two outs, but the ball bounced off the warning crack and went over the fence. 1-1 one, one pitch, Wade takes the change up outside, 2-1. and one. With the ball bouncing over the fence, since Valdespin had been originally at first base, the umpires held him at third. And then Torres popped out to end the inning. Tough break for the Wings, good break for Gagno. 2-1 pitch, Wade takes in the dirt. And a 3-1 and one count now on Lamont. Lamont has struck out and fouled out tonight. Three to Syracuse, bottom of the sixth. Daniel sights in his target, Rivera. The wine in the pitch. Wade swings and slices a foul ball out of play, well off down the left field line. Full count, three and two to Wade. New batch of baseballs rushed out there to the plate umpire, Ryan Adderton from one of the Frontier Field ball boys. Back comes Gagno with a 3-2. Wade pulls a ground ball through the right side. It's a base hit. Sharp two-out single for Lamont Wade. Briskly pulling that one between first and second. And Tony DeFrancesco is already out of the third base dugout of the Mets. He's going to bring in the righty Paul Seawall to face Xander Wheel. Wings have the possible tying run on base with two outs in the last of the six. They trail Syracuse 3-2. And we'll return to Frontier Field right after this on Fox Sports 1280. One minute. Both times tonight. Gagno giving up five hits and two runs in five and two-thirds innings. He walked one and struck out a season-high eight. Shortly did first for Wade, held by Tyrone. Seawald stretches, throws to first. Wade easily back, standing up. Seawald, 6'3", 205 pounds, a 10th round pick of the Mets back in 2012 out of the University of San Diego. Las Vegas native out on the mound. He sets letter high, throws the first pitch to wheel. Xander takes a strike on the outside corner. 90 mile an hour fastball from Paul Seawald. Big spot now for Xander Wheel. Wings trailing by a run three to two. Bottom of the sixth. Throw to first. Wade dives back. Wade did have a little bit of a running sort of look over there at first base. Let's see what Joel Skinner and Lamont Wade have in mind here. Wheel is being, uh, being played to pull on the infield with three men on the left side. The outfield pretty deep and straight away. Seawald's 0-1. Fastball just off the outside corner. Looked like he almost dropped down maybe a little bit more on that pitch than the previous one. A ball and a strike to the Red Wing first baseman. Xander Wheel. Jalen Davis would be next if Wheel keeps the inning alive. Wade gets a slightly bigger lead from first. He's not running. And the pitch is sprayed foul down the right field line. Curving well back in amongst the fans. The advantage on the hill to Seawald at one and two. Seawald, a veteran of just over 100 games in the big leagues, all in relief. Tucks the glove against the left side of his chest. He reaches into the glove, grabs the baseball as he glances over to first base. And the 1-2. Swinging a foul right off the mask of Rivera behind the plate. Still 1-2 on Xander Wheel. Wheel hanging around against Seawald. He's had tough luck. I mean, wins and losses aren't a great judge anymore, generally, of a pitcher, but especially in most cases of a relief pitcher, but in Seawald's case, it certainly jumps off the page at you that in the big leagues, parts of three years, his record is 0-13. He has 13 losses out of the bullpen for the Mets over the course of the last three seasons. 
Still one and two on wheel. The delivery, swing and a line drive in the right field. That's a base hit. Wade stops at second. Liriano a cannon in right. His throw in cut off by Espinosa, the shortstop. And the Wings have runners at first and at second. Jalen Davis comes up next. So back to back, two out singles from Lamont Wade off Drew Gagno and then from Xander Wheel off Paul Seawald. Jalen Davis tries to keep the line moving, a spot in which a base hit could very likely tie the game at three. Wings have trailed the whole way. Syracuse got a run in the first and really could have had more, but DeYoung worked out of it. They have led ever since then. Seawald's delivery. And it's inside off the mid of Rivera. Wade hesitates, tries to get to third, and the throw will nail him sliding in. Wade's hesitation cost him. Lamont started to go, then stopped, and then went again. The ball did not roll fall away, uh, far away, though, from Rivera, the catcher. And he easily retrieved the ball and threw out Wade at third, ending the inning. No runs, two hits, only one man left on. And at the end of six, it's still 3-2 to two. Syracuse on Fox Sports 1280. Hitters 8, 9, and 1 for Syracuse in the top of the seventh. The Mets hanging on to a 3-2 lead over the Red Wings. Gavin Cicchini leads off the inning. Preston Gilmet's pitch of the right-hand hitter is a called strike one. Boy, a tough way for the Wings. Bottom of the sixth to end. Lamont Wade, once he saw the ball squirt out of the mitt of catcher Rene Rivera, started to go to second and then stopped and then went again. Gilmet's 0-1 in the dirt. One ball and one strike. But that hesitation cost him. I think it was going to be tough for Wade to get to third anyway because the ball did not roll far away from Rivera. But he decided to give it a go, and Rivera easily threw him out for the final out of the inning. Gilmets 1-1 from the full windup. Swing and a miss at a splitter. 1-2 and two on Chikini. Again, his older brother, Garen, played in the IL North with Pawtucket. Garen was a left-handed hitter, though, and made it up to the big leagues with the Red Sox. Gavin, a right-handed batter all the way. Gilmet throws the pitch. It's in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. And the Wings hit the road for the five games in four days at Scranton after the game tonight, tomorrow night. On the 4th of July, the Red Wings face the first place Rail Riders at 7.05. The broadcast tomorrow night on News Radio Wham 1180. Here it is. Low for a ball, three and two. First games after the All-Star break next Thursday, a week from tomorrow, when the Wings face Lehigh Valley in a doubleheader at 535 on a Rochester Plates night. And Ron Guidry, Louisiana Lightning, will be here signing autographs on Thursday, July 11th. The pitch, Cicchini fouls it back. Still 3-2. and two. The Ron Guidry autograph appearance brought to you by the Rochester area Honda dealers. Also a pregame happy hour that night. With $2 beers and live music at the 10th inning bar. Rochester Plates team photo giveaway night as well, thanks to Nuthouse Escape Rooms. The pitch again swung on and bounced foul again, this time toward the third base dugout. It remains 3-2. and two. And then next Friday and Saturday, postgame concerts both nights. Friday, July 12th, Absolute Journey. The Journey Tribute Band performing, and the next night, the RPO. 3-2 again, and a cold strike three. Gilmet got him with a fastball at the knees. Gilmet has struck out both men he's faced. So one away in the seventh in front of Tim Tebow. The check of upcoming Wings promotions brought to you by Mini Melts. Everyone likes ice cream. Everyone will love Mini Melts. That, uh, that first homestand right after the All-Star break, promotion pack. Make sure you log on to RedWingsBaseball.com to find out all the info. Gilmet's first one to Tebow. Fastball grounded slowly past Gilmet to second. Valdespin fields it, has to shovel to Gilmet covering, and he gets there for the out. That was a good play by Gilmet. It's a 4-1 put out at first base. A, sl a slow dribbler to the right side of the infield. Gilmet went after it initially, which took him on his way toward first base. Wheel was going after the ball from first base. But Valdespin, the second baseman, got to it. And Gilmet alertly sprinted to first base after he realized he wasn't going to field it. And that came into play as Valdespin perfectly fed him with the little shovel toss. Good play. 
Two outs, nobody on for the top of the lineup. Rajay Davis. Syracuse three, the Red Wings two. Davis has scored at two of the three Syracuse runs tonight. Pitch to him here, outside and low for ball one. Davis officially two for two. Singled and scored in both the first and third innings, and then his sacrifice bunt in the fifth inning helped set up the third run of the game for the Mets. Gilmets 1 0 to the veteran, inside and low, 2 and nothing now on Rajay Davis. Now he's been around for a long time. In fact, his first go around in the IL was back in 2006 when he was coming through the IL West with Indianapolis as a Pittsburgh Pirates prospect 13 years ago. Gilmets 2 0. Davis takes a strike to the outside, 2 and 1. 3 to 2, Syracuse, top of the seventh inning. It's been forever since the Wings have had a game this low scoring this late into the game. Here it comes, swinging a bouncing ball foul behind the plate. And a two ball, two strike count on Rajay Davis. Wings will have Jalen Davis leading off the bottom of the seventh against Paul Seawald. Again, the pitch delivered. Swing and a miss. The ball down low strikes out Davis. A good inning again for Preston at Gilmet. One, two, three, a pair of strikeouts. It is seventh inning stretch time at Frontier Field. Syracuse three, the Red Wings two on Fox Sports 1280. Down to Las Vegas. High school that's produced all sorts of athletes over the years, but especially baseball players. Seawald from the stretch exclusively. Delivers from that lower arm angle. Starts off Davis with a breaking ball that's popped foul. First base side and into the stands. 0-1. Daniel Zamora technically got the loss Monday night when Seawald gave up the Britt Rooker home run. Is beginning to play catch now in the Mets bullpen. Seawald on the 0-1 pitches. Davis takes the breaking ball for a called strike. 0-2. No a couple of sliders in a row from Seawald to Jalen Davis. Seawald ready quickly. The two-strike pitch. Davis swings, punches one to shallow right. Liriano coming on. Can't get there. It lands in safely. Good piece of hitting by Jalen Davis. Just kind of poked that one into right. Breaking ball away from him. The Wings have the tying run on. Davis with some speed aboard, but none out. And now Jordani Valdez being the batter. The former New York Met has homered and walked tonight. He was stranded at third base in the fifth in the inning in which Nick Gordon's double, unfortunately and unluckily for the Wings, bounced over the wall and left. Otherwise, Valesmeen likely would have scored to tie that game. Seawald turns, lobs the throw to first. Davis back easily standing up. Valdesbean batting a left-handed hitter, then the right-handed hitting Sawyer on deck, and then after him, Nick Gordon. Zamora could be in there by the time Gordon comes up. The Seawald delivery. Valdesbean shows a bunt and takes low for ball one. One and nothing on Jordani. The Wings will need to rally late in the game tonight to win it and get back within a game of 500. They lost the late lead last night in a bid to get to 500 for the first time since they were 1-1 one and one just two games into the season. Now feel deep and straight away. Valdezbean was showing bunt on the last pitch. Seawald fires no sign of a bunt. Instead, a fastball for a strike. And Valdezbean faces a one-ball, one-strike count now. At third base, Tejada, Valdezbean's old Mets teammate, remains in right on the edge of the grass. Shortstop Danny Espinosa shades toward the middle. Tyrone holds on at Davis, who has a short lead at first base. Seawald's 1-1. Valdezbean is going to bunt. He lays it down. Barehanded by Rivera. He throws a second. Davis is out on a close play sliding in. Just got him at second base. Valdezbean's bunt did not get very far away from home plate. 
Rivera barehanded it, and the catcher, with no hesitation, gunned it down to second base. Davis went in sliding, but was called out on a very close call. Really close at second. And Valdez being trying to sacrifice instead, winds up with a fielder's choice as Davis is forced out 2-6 at second base. With a naked eye, I thought he was maybe out. One look at the replay, really close. Rivera made a bold move, and it worked out great for Syracuse. Now Winston saw your face of Seawald. Seawald fires. Fastball threads over the outside corner at 90 miles an hour. No one won. Bunt from Valdespin just did not get far enough away from home plate. Just trickled up the first base line. I know Gene Glenn, the former Red Wing manager, always used to say you want to make sure those sacrifice bunts get off the dirt onto the infield grass. That bunt did not do that. The 0-1 fouled straight back, nothing in two. Valdespin's bunt did not make it onto the grass. If you can picture that dirt circle around home plate, that gives you an idea of how close to home plate that bunt still was. Rivera scooped it up with his bare right hand. And then he lasered a throw down to Espinosa covering second. Syracuse three, Red Wings two. Valdez being at first with one out. Sawyer down in the count 0-2 as Seawald stretches and now fires. Swing and a line drive, base hit the other way to right field. Valdez being round second, heads for third. Liriano's throw comes into second base, and the Wings have runners at the corners with only one out. Sawyer goes the other way with his first hit of the night. Valdez being easily motoring around first to third, and Tony DeFrancesco has already emerged from his dugout. Looks like he will bring in Daniel Zamora to face Nick Gordon. Keep in mind, Gordon has been pretty good against left-handed pitching. But the southpaw Zamora will come in to face the left-handed batting Gordon with the tying run at thirst, uh, third, go-ahead run at first, only one out in the bottom of the seventh. Syracuse leads 3-2, to two, and we'll see what happens next when we return to Frontier Field on Fox Sports 1280. hit the two-run homer off Seawald, but uh, the go-ahead run went against Zamora's line. Gordon's one for three, a double last time up. Again, that tough rake when Gordon's double bounced over the fence in left center. Zamora with a good breaking ball out there. He eases into the set position. First pitch to Gordon, slider, swung on and fouled in the dirt at home plate, 0-1-1. Only one out, they're at the corners. 3-2 Syracuse. Lamora's gone back and forth a couple of times this year between Syracuse and New York. The Southpaw product of Stony Brook University with the 0-1 pitch. Gordon waves and misses at a breaking ball away. 0-1-2. Now Zamora. If he gets Gordon, still going to have to face a right-handed batter next. Ronald Torres on deck. With Syracuse this year in 12 appearances, Zamora has compiled a 386 earned run average. He's only allowed seven hits in 11 and two-thirds innings. He checks the runners, throws the two-strike pitch. Gordon swings and bounces one foul up the first base side. And it remains nothing and two on Nick Gordon. A base hit would tie the game. The wings have trailed ever since. Syracuse got a run in the top of the first. Infield a double play depth up the middle. Another two strike pitch on the way. Fastball low. One ball, two strikes. Rivera hopped up out of his crouch, threatened to throw down to third base just to give Valdespin something to think about. Ruben Tejada, the third baseman, was nowhere near the bag. Valdez being getting a decent sized lead down the third base line with Tejada off the line toward short with a left hand bat and Gordon at the plate. One two here, breaking ball fouled off to the left. That ball was breaking and breaking away from Gordon. 
when he started his swing, I thought that was going to be a swing and a miss, but Gordon reached out there and flared it, and he stays alive. Some of those curveballs from Zamora, when he really tries to make, break it away from a lefty, it just seems like they're not going to start uh, stop breaking. They start breaking, and they just keep on breaking. Gordon waiting him out at home plate. Slightly open stance. Levels the bat off on his left shoulder. Now cocks it above the left shoulder, waiting on the pitch. Here it is. Swing and a line drive to right center field. Up the alley it goes. Valdez Bean scores to tie the game. Sawyer hits third. Joel Skinner's waving him home. Winston scores the end of the wings. The lead as Gordon triples in a pair. 4-3 Red Wings. What a terrific at bat for Nick Gordon. Gordon got a pitch he could handle and he pounded a liner up the right center field gap. His third at three base hit. Now looking for more. Ronald Torres comes up. Wings with their first lead all night. Gordon at third, only one out. Tyler Bachelor is beginning to loosen now in the Syracuse pin. Tony DeFrancesco plays the infield in all the way around, and the pitch to Torres sinks too low for ball one. On the fifth inning, Gordon tried to tie the game with a double, but had the misfortune of it bouncing over the fence. This time, that line drive shot up the alley, goes as a triple. The 1 0. The one outside, two and nothing to Torres. And Gordon continues to handle lefties pretty well most of the time. Especially if it's a lefty that does not have big velocity, Gordon handles them all right. The 2-0 pitch, breaking ball sweeps inside, 3-0 on Torres. Ronald 0 for 3 thus far tonight. Jake Cave is on deck, another left-handed batter. Dallas mean failing to get down the successful sacrifice bunt did not thwart the Red Wings offense this inning. The 3-0 clips the outside corner. And a 3-1 count now to Torres. Jalen Davis began the inning with a single. Then Valdez being trying to bunt him to second. Instead got Davis forced out. But then Sawyer single. Gordon against Zamora triples in both men to give the Wings the lead. The pitch delivered. Down low, ball four. Torres draws the walk. And the Wings again with a corner situation. First and third for Jake Cave. Cave is thrilled to see Drew Gagneau out of the game. He went 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts against Gagneau in that changeup. Now as a left-handed batter, he'll have to deal with the breaking balls from Zamora. And Zamora is hoping to get the ball on the ground in hopes of getting a double play ball from Cave, who generally hits the ball in the air a lot. First pitch to Jake. Down and in, 1 and nothing. Zamora has now missed the strike zone with five of the last six pitches after the Gordon two-run triple. And Rene Rivera walks in front of home plate. The catcher looks into his dugout and then flashes defensive signs to the infield. They're getting informed from Rivera what he's going to be doing with the baseball in the event that Torres takes off from first base. Would Rivera throw through to second, for example, or not? Big lead at third for Gordon. The pitch to Kay. Breaking ball. Blooped out the right center field. Dropping quickly, and that's in for a hit. Gordon cruises in to score. Torres read that beautifully off the bat. Sprints around to third base on the RBI single from Cave. 5-3 Red Wings. Cave dumping that one into right center field before the RBI hit. The Wings keeping the line moving. Torres read that great off the bat. The Wings runner at first base, Torres, knew that that was going to float in there, and he never hesitated going all the way to third base on that hit. And that is all for Zamora. Tyler, uh, Tyler Bachelor will come in to face Brent Rooker next. Zamora came into the game and did not record an out. 5-3, the Red Wings are leading. We'll return in a moment here on Fox Sports 
miles an hour. Brent Rooker one for three with a single tonight in there. Righty to righty. Bachelor with men at the corners. Throws the pitch. And he starts off Rooker with a breaking ball. That stays high. 1-0. Oh. To Reyes at third. Cave at first. Bachelor straightens up. Puts the ball into the glove. The 1-0 oh to Rooker. Brent swings skies. A pop fly foul off to the right. A ball and a strike on the Red Wings cleanup man, Brent Rooker. Wings taking their first lead all night in the bottom of the seventh inning, having scored three runs and making a bid for more. One and one on Rooker. Bachelor delivers. Rooker takes the breaking ball low. Two and one. Lamont Wade is on deck for the Wings. Paul Seawald, Daniel Zamora, and Tyler Bachelor have all pitched this inning for Syracuse. Behind in the count, the 2 1 pitch to Rooker. Breaking ball found the outside corner. 2 and 2 on Rooker. Bachelor throws in the upper 90s in three of his four pitches to Rooker at least have been breaking balls. Two and two on Brent. It's from a mostly upright stance. The delivery. Swing and a foul and that got a piece of Rivera behind the plate. Ricky Chang back off him. Another breaking ball from Bachelor and still two and two. And the Wings offense the way they've been going it's just hard to keep them quiet for an entire game. And it's come alive that offense has in the seventh inning against Syracuse's bullpen. Bachelor has spent part of the last two years in the big leagues with the Mets. Rifles in the 2-2. Rooker swings, pulls a ground ball foul right by Joel Skinner coaching third base. Rooker pulling that 97 mile an hour fastball. Tell you what, Rooker can get around on a fastball. He'll still occasionally swing and miss at one, but I mean, we've seen him pull hard fastballs, sometimes with a lot of authority. Bachelor has largely kept away from the fastball in this plate appearance. The 2 2 again, Rooker swings, tops one foul, bouncing that to the third base dugout, and it remains 2 and 2. Rivera is jogging out to the mound. He's going to strategize with Bachelor before they throw another pitch to Rooker. I think some concern from that Syracuse dugout, perhaps, that uh, Rooker has gotten a couple of decent swings as this at bat has progressed. Nick Gordon and Jake Cave with RBI hits here in the seventh inning for the Wings that they have rallied to take the lead 5 3. They're now six outs away from the win, taking the series two games to one if they do notch the W tonight. Rivera now back behind the plate, sets up the target. Bachelor pauses belt high. Here it comes. Rooker checks his swing on a high fastball. Did he go? No, he held in time. He held in time on the fastball up above the zone. Three and two to count. Now Rooker will strike out some. Does Joel Skinner consider starting Jake Cave from first in this spot. Eight pitches so far from Bachelor to the first man he's faced, Rooker. They're at the corner, Cave at first, Torres at third. Cave is going. The pitch, a breaking ball for a called strike for the second. Rooker, Cave throws on the brakes and the throw home gets away. Torres slides in and Cicchini throws it right past Rivera. And Cave goes to third. The Wings steal an extra run. It is six to three. Rooker struck out looking. Rivera's throw to second. Caught by Cicchini. Cave had slammed on the brakes. And Cicchini trying to throw out Torres at the plate. Overthrew Rivera to the backstop. And Torres was going to be safe anyway. I don't think Cicchini did what the Mets intended him to do on that play. Rivera looked very upset afterwards. 
So a 6-3 Red Wing lead. Wade the batter. Cave now at third base, and the pitch from Bachelor is outside 1-0. Red Wings is stealing a run, basically, here in the seventh inning. The pitch, Wade looks at a knee-high strike at 96 miles an hour. And a one-and-one one count as soon as Rivera threw through to second base. Torres ducked his head and sprinted for home. Even if Cicchini's throw had been a good one, Torres was going to be safe. Bachelor fires. Swing and a pop fly foul straight back by Wade, one and two. I think Rivera thought that Chiquini should have tried to chase down a Cave. Had he tagged out Cave before Torres got home, then the run would not have scored, obviously. Cave had thrown on the brakes, but he was not far away from Chiquini. It would have been a close call had Chiquini tried to tag him out. Big lead at third for Cave, and the one-two is upstairs for a ball. Two balls and two strikes on Wade. Wings with a lot of stuff going on in the seventh inning, scoring four times, taking a 6-3 lead, and they may not be done yet. Cave leads off from third base, getting an enormous lead with Tejada swung over toward short. The pitch to Wade. Changeup, foul to back. 88-mile-an-hour changeup. Wade got a piece, and still 2-2. Two and two. man not to bat this inning for the Red Wings is on deck, Xander Wheel. Another 2-2 to Wade. Swing and a fly ball into right field. Reimer Liriano is there, and he will put it away two-handed for the final out of the inning. But a big seventh inning for the Red Wings. They score four times to go in front. 6-3 Rochester. Syracuse up next in the top of the eighth on Fox Sports 1280. and Tejada bats against Gilmet. The tall right-hander out of it. California's pitch straight over the top. A breaking ball that stays up. 1-0. 6-3 Red Wings. And the Lehigh Valley and Buffalo split their doubleheader in Buffalo. Well, that means the Wings, who began play today, two games behind Buffalo, could gain a half game of the Bisons. Gilmet swings into the motion, the 1-0, a breaking ball strike. 1-1 one one on Tejada. Ruben Tejada is 1-3 for three tonight with a single, also knocked in a run with a swiver in front of the plate in the fifth. Red Wings with six runs on ten hits. Gilmet fires, and he buries that in the dirt, 2-1. and one. Three runs on it, seven hits for Syracuse. Twelve thousand four hundred eighty-three. The announced crowd tonight here in Frontier Field. Wow, huge throng tonight. Largest crowd at Frontier Field since August 10, 2017. Biggest crowd since August of 2017 at Frontier Field. Bigger than any crowds last year. They've seen a good one tonight. Gilmets two-one. Inside three and one. Tejada, Espinosa, and Rivera here in the top of the eighth for Syracuse. Gilmet and Chase DeYoung combining to set down the last six straight Mets hitters. Here it is. And a strike of the knees. Three and two. Beyond that, nine of the last ten Mets hitters have been retired by the Chase DeYoung, Preston, and Gilmet combo. Gilmet wanting to keep Tejada off base, throws a 3-2 pitch. Tejada swings, and it's a fly ball shallow right. Jalen Davis is there, drifting toward the line. He'll easily make the catch for out number one in the eighth. And nearly 10,000 here last night. Almost 12,500 here tonight. Monday night, there were over 6,800 fans here at the ballpark. And a good weekend turnout as well with Pawtucket in town, so a really good homestand for the Wings, their final homestand before the All-Star break. Danny Espinosa, the batter, switch hitter digging in left-handed. 
6-3 Red Wings in the eighth inning. Gilmet fires, and he misses low for ball one. 1-0. One hey, internet options can be confusing, but you don't have to go it alone with Frontier Internet. You'll get the bandwidth you need to get more done. Share photos and stream your tunes all at a simple, everyday, low price. The 1-0 pitch, Espinosa takes a strike, 1-1. One and one. Frontier Communications, your friend in the digital frontier. Call 1-888-FRONTIER or visit Frontier.com to switch today. Frontier terms and conditions apply. Taxes, fees, and other restrictions apply. 1-1 one one on Espinosa, the delivery. Swing and a foul, topped behind the plate, one and two. Nobody is warming behind Gilmet at the moment. This game has gone from a pitching standpoint really, really well for the Wings. Chase DeYoung turned in a solid start. Gilmet has been good from the bullpen. The Wings rallying it late against the Syracuse bullpen. Gilmet guns in the one two. Espinosa lays off a high fastball, two balls and two strikes. The two veterans head head here, Gilmet against Espinosa. These two may have even been teammates, who knows, at some point. Gilmet's had a, well, these are two guys who've had a ton of teammates over the years. Here it is, swing and a miss, the splitter strikes at Espinosa. Four strikeouts for Gilmet. He's He's had two really good appearances in a row now from the Wings' bullpen. And actually, I shouldn't say from the Wings' bullpen because his last appearance was in a spot start over the weekend against Pawtucket. Trying to retire the team in order. He will face Rene Rivera now. Rivera's one for three with a single. Into the motion he goes. The pitch. Rivera takes ball one, low and away. One and nothing to count. Of course, the Wings are without Zach Littell now tonight, with Littell recalled to Minnesota today. Jake Rizzi landing on the injured list. Gilmet's 1-0 in there, 1-1. One and one. Wings in the bottom of the eighth will have Wheel, Jalen Davis, and then Jordani Valdesbeen coming up. Gilmet throws the pitch to Rivera, swing and a miss at a fastball away from him. One and two, Gilmet is a strike away from a three up, three down, top of the eighth inning. Six to three, Red Wings. Gilmet turns, now fires. Rivera swings and it's a line drive, base hit into left. Second hit of the night for Rene Rivera, the former Red Wing has been just scalding at the plate. And so he reaches with two outs. Reimer Liriano will come up. A home run would get them to within a run, and, and that emphasizes just how big the Wings stealing that last run of the previous inning was. When Rooker struck out looking, but Cave was running. Rivera's throw went through to second base. Cave alertly slammed on the brakes. And it, Torres raced for home and scored. First pitch here to Liriano, taken for a strike, 0-1-1. We'll have to check with Joel Skinner whether that was a called play or not. If, if Cave had the information that he was supposed to stop on a throw through or not. Either way, it was well done. The 0-1 is on the inside corner, nothing in two. And the Wings are now four outs away from not only winning tonight and getting to within a game of 500, but this would also be... We mentioned earlier Joel Skinner's career win number 1,000 as a professional manager between the minor leagues and his short stint as a manager of the Cleveland Indians. The pitch outside with a fastball, one and two. Skinner won 35 games one year as the interim manager for the Cleveland Indians. Replacing Charlie Manuel. Two out base runner at first, Rene Rivera, the one-two pitch in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes on Liriano. The Wings are now beginning action in the bullpen. Looks like Ian Kroll, the lefty, is beginning to warm up. The Red Wings have a 6-3 to three lead in the eighth. They trailed the entire way before scoring four times in the bottom of the seventh. Gilmet eyes the runner at first. Rivera, very slow runner. The over-the-top pitch... 
Swing and a miss. The splitter in the dirt strikes out Liriano to end the inning. No runs, a hit for Rivera. He's stranded at first base, and the Wings will go to the bottom of the eighth, leading Syracuse still 6-3 to three on Fox Sports 1280. in line with a possible loss in this game. 6-3 wings. Wheel, again, the only man not to bat in the four-run eight-batter seventh inning. Front throwing at Tyler Bashler, an Atlanta area native on the mound, and the first pitch he throws to Wheel is a breaking ball way outside. 1-0. Jalen Davis is on deck. Bachelor from the stretch, the righty's pitch. Breaking ball again, and a called strike, one and one. Now, yesterday was the first day of the international signing period. Lots of teams around Major League Baseball signing, for the most part, players from Latin American countries. The 1 1 pitch from Bachelor to Wheel. Swung on, sliced to right, curving away from Liriano toward the corner. Liriano makes a running catch. What a play! Liriano taking extra bases away from Xander Wheel with a phenomenal running catch into the corner. On the dead sprint, Liriano at the last moment almost threw his glove out there, and the fly ball from Wheel landed in the glove. That was a great, great catch. And the Wings, instead of a double or even a triple to begin the inning, instead have one out. Jalen Davis now coming up. But anyway, in the Latin American country, in the Dominican, there is a summer league the Dominican Summer League. Jalen Davis is the batter, and the pitch to Jalen. Fastball for a called strike, 97 miles an hour, 0 and 1. So the Dominican Summer League begins at basically the same time as, say, the New York Pin League you might be familiar with, or the Appalachian League. The 0 1. A little low, one ball and one strike. And I, I bring that up because today the Twins team in the Dominican Summer League. Had a really rough day against the Yankees Dominican Summer League team. The pitch, breaking ball, popped up foul first base side. And that will soar back in amongst the fans. It's one and two. Six to three Red Wings in the bottom of the eighth. So it's six to three, bottom of the eighth. The Wings are leading. The Dominican Summer League Twins today lost to the Dominican Summer League Yankees. 38 to two. 38 to 2 and and the Yankees did not score a run in the first inning. It was nothing to nothing after one inning. But then the Yankees got ro rolling. The pitch in the dirt. Two balls and two strikes. 38 to 2, 31 hits for the Dominican Summer League Yankees today against the Dominican Summer League Twins. That is a new record for runs in a game, supposedly, in a minor league baseball history. 38 runs. One out, base is empty. The delivery, breaking ball, lashed from the ground to short. Espinosa throws across his body perfectly to first. And they're two away. Espinosa made that a slightly flashier play than he probably needed to, but he has what you would call arm talent, I guess. That's what they say about a quarterback, right, in the NFL? Espinosa has a really strong arm, and he can make throws from all sorts of angles. That time he trotted in to field the grounder, and instead of planting and throwing to first, he just kind of casually flicked the ball across his body on a line to the first baseman. Valdez being the batter, Bachelor's pitch. Off speed and a called strike one to Giordani. The last inning when Valdez being failed to sacrifice Davis to second base early in the inning, you, you had to think that maybe that was going to snuff out any hopes of a rally. But that's not what happened at all. The 0-1, Valdesmin clips it foul behind the plate, 0-2. Valdesmin was at first with one out after his failed sacrifice bunt attempt. But then Sawyer singled Jordani around to third base. And then Tony DeFrancesco went to the lefty Daniel Zamora to face Nick Gordon. And Gordon, in a tremendous plate appearance, tripled in both base runners to give the Wings their first lead of the night. Two-strike pitch from Bashler, swing and a high pop-up, shallow left. The third baseman, Tejada, is circling back. He's there. He has it, and the Wings go in order. 
in the last of the eighth inning. To the ninth we go. The Wings have a 6-3 lead. They'll try to hang on to beat Syracuse next on Fox Sports 1280. Wings, incidentally, have gone in order now three different times tonight. First time in 11 games the Wings have been retired one, two, three, three times in a game. The last time that had happened was Saturday, June 22nd in Toledo when Tyler Alexander pitched seven shutout innings and fanned 12 Red Wings in the process. First pitch to Blanco spins him around inside, a fastball that nearly hit him. 1-0. Fastball came in from Kroll. And almost hit Blanco in the arm. It's one and nothing. Blanco's one for three, hitting everything the other way to left tonight. Holding his last time out when his drive to left was caught on the warning track by Brent Rooker. Roll stretches. He pitches. Fastball in there at 94 miles an hour. One and one. Blanco, Tyrone, and Cicchini. If anybody reaches, Tim Tebow could get a chance to bat. Be an excellent come from behind win for the Wings tonight. The pitch on the way, slashed foul to the left, up into the seats, one and two. And with a win, the Wings will get back to within a game of 500, leading into the five game, four day series in Scranton that begins tomorrow night on the 4th of July. Roll pumps home the one two. Breaking ball inside, two balls and two strikes. And from a pitching standpoint, I think to this point, things have gone about as well as the Wings could have imagined. Here it is. One outside, three and two. Cole is making his eighth Red Wing appearance since signing a minor league deal with the Twins. He was with Louisville the first part of the year. Overall, this is his 36th IL appearance of the season. 3-2 pitch, Blanco. Finds it foul to the left. And remains three and two to the veteran. Clearly the difference in the game, the four runs in the seventh inning for the Wings. The Syracuse bullpen just could not get three outs very easily that inning. Three, two again, swung on and fouled again. Back into the left. And it stays three and two on Gregor Blanco. Chase DeYoung did a good job of limiting Syracuse to only the one run in the first inning when they had the bases loaded with nobody out. Had some tough luck giving up a run in the third inning and gave up another run in the fifth. The delivery is outside. Kroll lost him with a 3-2 curveball, and Blanco scores a walk to begin the top of the ninth inning. The man on base in front of Travis Tyrone. Tyrone has gone hitless over three, striking out twice, once against DeYoung, and the other time against Gilmet. Roll operating from the stretch. The Wings will hold on. Blanco at first. Three men left side of the infield for Tyrone. The delivery, swing and a miss. Tyrone with that uppercut swing came up empty and a ball up. 0-1. Outfield fairly deep. A bit of a gap in right center for Tyrone. They kick the 0-1, lifted to right field down the line, curving it toward the berm, a foul ball that will wind up over the berm and bouncing behind the sweet spot. Nothing and two on Tyrone, one of the more strikeout-prone hitters in the I.L. And Cole now has a chance to become the third different Wings pitcher to strike him out tonight. 6-3 Red Wings in the ninth. Cole settles into the belt. The Chicago area natives pitch. Swing and a miss. The high fastball strikes out Tyrone on three pitches. And one away in the ninth inning. And now Gavin Cicchini. Cicchini playing his first game with Syracuse. He has gone one for three with a double tonight. With a lefty crawl on the mound, Tony DeFrancesco looks like will not have Tebow bat next if that spot does get a chance to bat. Pitch to Cicchini, fouled straight down, got him on the foot, 0-1. There is Mindy Alcantara, a switch hitter, 
has emerged on deck to pinch it for Tebow next. And it's 0-1 on Cicchini. Lake Charles, Louisiana native. Takes his time getting back to home plate. Getting a former first-round pick out of high school by the Mets. He was the 12th pick of the 2012 draft. Originally drafted to play shortstop, primarily though a second baseman by now. One on, one out, six to three wings. Rolls one strike pitch, swung on and lifted to left center field. Cave scoots over from center. He's there, he has it, and they're two down in the ninth inning. Blanco remains at first. And now Alcantara will come up to pinch it for Tebow. Alcantara's had a decent series at the plate. As a left-handed batter, he homered off Drew Hutchison going the other way to left on Monday night. And Tebow, who has struggled against left-handed pitchers despite the single and homer last night off Smeltzer, gets batted for by Alcantara. Tebow had gone 0 for 2 with a walk tonight. And now Alcantara, the batter. Then who spent time in the big leagues. With Syracuse, he has batted 318. Short hitter batting from the right side. The pitch swung and grounded toward short. Gordon in front of it, fields. Plants his feet, fires the first. He is out. That's the ball game. The Red Wings win it 6-3 to three, thanks to four runs in the seventh inning. And they take the series two games to one. They're back within a game of 500. And Joel Skinner has just recorded the 1,000th win in his professional managerial career. Terrific win in front of almost 12,500 fans at Frontier Field. And we'll return to get the Red Wing postgame show started after this on Fox Sports 1280.